<clears throat> Hello and uh, welcome to the Startup Summit session on doing business in Estonia. Um, my name is James York. I am the Director of US Business and Innovation and I am normally posted to the Estonian Consulate General in New York. I'm very pleased to have with me today my good colleagues Maris Pri and Alvar Sosar. Maris is the Director of FDI and Business Development in Silicon Valley and Alvar is the Director of US Investment and Trade. And today we will be having a conversation about Estonia and why you should be looking at it as a business environment. So with that brief opening, I'd like to hand it off to Mars and please introduce yourself. Thank you, James. Hello from um, San Francisco. And this is the, literally the first time that I'm able to say it because I arrived here uh, last evening. So my name is Maris Bri. I'm um, representative of the Estonian Investment Agency based in, in San Francisco. My background is heavily in operations and corporate governance and also startups and early stage uh, investments. And um, my aim here is to advocate Estonia's innovative digital society, um, business environment and startup scene in the US and promote foreign direct investments to Estonia. Alvar, handing over to you. Hi, uh, thank you for having me. Um, my name's uh, Alvar Sozar, and uh, as James mentioned, I'm the uh, Director of US Investment and Trade uh, for the Foreign Ministry, uh, based out of the uh, Embassy in Washington. And uh, my background is, uh, I'm, I'm a US-born uh, Estonian, um, in business for my entire career, uh, mostly as an investor in a variety of asset classes. Um, and I've done a good bit of uh, bringing companies over from Europe to the US. And uh, it's been, I'm pretty, pretty new to this role, uh, but uh, you know, everyone, I've, I've known James for years, I've known Maris for years, and I've known you know, the, the various people in our, in our, in our agencies for, for a very long time as well. And so this has been a um, you know, perhaps during during COVID has been an interesting time, but uh, we're finding ways of of getting work done, and um, hoping to tell you guys a little bit more about that. Mm -hmm. And definitely, so that's it's an excellent point. So Maris uh, is with the Estonian Investment Agency. Alvar is with the the Ministry of Foreign Affairs. I'm with Enterprise Estonia. The Estonian Investment Agency is a uh, division within Enterprise Estonia. The Ministry of Foreign Affairs is obviously its own entity, but as you can tell. We all have similar titles, similar roles, similar functions, and we are here to help in similar capacities. <laughs> so please look to all of us as a resource to you as you start to explore the Estonian market um, and what you can do here and all the amazing things within it. Um, however, I'm gonna take a little bit of a step back and act as moderator for today's conversation um, because when we're talking about FDI and investment, Maris and Alvar are absolutely your first point of contact. And I'm gonna, let them start with the conversation. Let's start with the ecosystem. It seems a natural place to start. It is. I think Alvar made an excellent point that I'll know that we, like I'm, I'm kind of new to this role as well, but we have known each other for years and that is kind of the common nominator for Estonian ecosystem that it's very closely um, tied and it's very um, active and, and really people do get to know each other. But yeah, looking back now in history, where it started and how do we, how did we get to where we are at the moment? Um, it, 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 uh, it, it, uh, it's fair to say that it's all started with uh, Skype, uh, which was uh, developed in Estonia, uh, with Skype um, being the first major exit and the first unicorn that Estonia had, uh, that um, kind of um, pushed out um, people to ecosystem that actually knew what it is to build, um, build a startup uh, to uh, interact with uh, venture capitalists and, and uh, with Exit, yeah, there were uh, plenty of people with enough money to, to become the first angel investors and also to, to establish the first uh, VC fund in Estonia. Yeah, I mean, that's, you know, you look back and you, you see what was the really defining event. And I completely agree. It's the, it's the exit or the two exits, I guess, of <laughs> Skype. Um, and, uh, you know, there was recently an article that came out, uh, I want to say maybe on uh, you know, CNBC or something, uh, showing that one of the Skype founders has invested uh, over 100 million pounds. It was a British article. 
so let's say $130 million uh, in uh, startups, it, it, mostly in Estonia. And, you know, that's a mind bogging, bogging, mind bogging, boggling me <laughs> large number um, for a single individual. Um, and he's had, you know, exits uh, from some of those investments as well. And so it's been a, it's been very interesting. Um, but, you know, it's not typical in an ecosystem for people to reinvest that aggressively. And that's one of the things that's really special about the Estonian ecosystem that, you know, a, a people that, you know, maybe are known as being a little bit kind of cold are actually very, very cooperative when it comes to startups and, and companies and business. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, so ambient sound investments is how those guys really, the, the, the Skype founders came together and, 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 and started investing. But, you know, that's on the angel side, when you talk to VCs today, they, they're often saying, well, we look for the next Skype and yeah, whatever, sure. I, I'm looking for the next Facebook. Um, but, but what it means is they're looking for immediately an international team that has capability of talking to an international audience and gathering capital from a variety of sources. And so that is Estonia's uh, startups and, and, and other businesses don't have an Estonia centric uh, focus when they're developing their products. They really, they're, they're either going immediately to the rest of Europe or Japan or North America, or in, and in some cases, Africa and, and, you know, point is elsewhere in the world immediately because they realize that a population of 1.3 million isn't going to cut it other than as a great testing ground. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. And what contributes to that as well, that the neighboring countries that we have aren't that big either. Um, so, so in, in, even in, in more because of that, uh, the, the, the born global mindset has to be there for, for all the startup founders from Estonia. Um, we did agree that we are not going to do it like a typical sales pitch and, you know, uh, <laughs> uh, push through like fact after fact. Hard not to. But A lot of good things to be said, so, you know. <laughs> but just to, to set the grounds, like, you know, Estonian startup scene and what we have here, um, Estonia is um, number one country in the world for unicorns per capita. We have five unicorns. Uh, just recently, there was a pipe drive exit that we had as well. Um, and that has given a very good example to all the young entrepreneurs that you can do it from Estonia as well. Um, and, and all those founders, as Alvar was saying that, you know, yes, it's, it's a very close tight uh, community and, and, and founders are always willing to help each other. Wow. And almost uh, oh, like majority of the, the, the well-established uh, startup founders, they are angel investors themselves as well. Mm -hmm. And I, I think that's, that's something that is, is exceptionally unique about Estonia is that it's not just the it's not just the money being reinvested, which is already astounding in and of itself. But it's exactly that, Mars. It's the it's the community and the accessibility, and the availability that founders who are further down the path are willing to share their time and their experience um, with those who are coming in, regardless of whether they're Estonian or not. It's really just a question: Are you part of the Estonian ecosystem? But Estonia is so much more and and broader than just Estonia and Estonians. It really is. It acts as almost like a global hub for this Absolutely. region of the world well, and for the international and part like yeah i, I like I, I was very closely connected with the estonian startup ecosystem for so many years and with the personal experience i can say that there were numerous times we had uh, ecosystem events where there was let's say out of 50 people there was one foreigner and it was obviously the whole event was held in english so th th there is no reason to think that yeah, Estonian, <laughs> they, they are cold and they keep themselves like, no, it's, it's very international community that we have. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. And, and I think the other aspect of that, you see that also at the government level and, and maybe I'm, now I'm putting on my government hat, um, but we, we've made a very deliberate decision as a country to be accepting of people from elsewhere uh, because we see uh, smart, innovative uh, people as a resource that if someone else, if they if they want to come to the U to, to to the U.S., of course that's that's one point. But if they want to come to Estonia, 
they're given that opportunity. There's visas available, and and we can certainly talk about those a little bit. Um, but but generally, you know, there's there's Est Estonians have also gone out. I mean, there's the European Innovation Academy that is run basically by Estonians, and that's brought a lot of really great people into the Estonian ecosystem: French, Spanish, Italians, Germans, um, and one really big aspect that's interesting is the Russians, Belarusians, Ukrainians uh, look to Estonia as a place where they can start a company but still be kind of tied to their home market. It's close enough to home. They can find workers who can speak in Russian um, or Ukrainian as, as the case may be, mm -hmm. but start a company that is EU based. And, and can move on from there. And they are welcomed with open arms as well. So it, it, it's really, I guess we're kind of selling it a little bit, but, but it's, it's hard not to. Well, let's, putting on, the, putting on the, the salesman hat, I mean, let's, let's talk about numbers and, and valuations because the, the valuations in the, of what's come out of the ecosystem over the past decade have just skyrocketed. And, and I really do believe that it's, it's not just the uh, access to, to capital, it's not just the access to um, more mature founders who can share their experience and, are, and make themselves accessible to the new kids on the block, if you will. Um, but it's, it's also that international mix and that kind of that open door policy of, being, of welcoming in global talent so that you're finding that you've got the right mix of ingredients to really be creating these world-class technology companies, you know, just like, you know, Mars is, is next door to in Silicon Valley. Yes, very true. Um... I was actually just uh, checking the numbers uh, before this uh, conversation, like, you know, how did we uh, end it with 2020 startup investments? And that was actually a way higher number in total than 2019. So 2020, despite of the uh, COVID uh, effects that obviously all the, uh, like many companies in Estonia also felt, and the startup scene, yes, the, the total number of investments and, and valuations uh, went actually higher. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and I mean that's not to say though that that the valuations are, um, you know, at levels of the U.S. or or even of uh, let's say the U.K. Although we'll see what happens there um, post Brexit, but uh, it is still a great place to get good value for what you're getting. Uh, so you know, it's 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 a great place to invest mm -hmm. um, from from a valuation perspective. But it's also now gotten to the point where there's enough investors looking in that it's it's somewhere between let's say Central Europe and Western Europe in terms of valuations. And usually the next step, like what was the what was the um, average valuation for seed in in 2020? Like like close to 10 million euros for a round. Um, I think it, it, like average valuation the whole 2020 was a bit above uh, seven million euros, but that was all the rounds. Um, Got it. Yeah. I mean, it's, it's, it's getting up there, you know, it's not, it's not in the U S numbers uh, uh, yet. Um, and hopefully it never will be because it's, you know, it, it, part of what makes it special is that it's a, it's a scrappy kind of place uh, where people can um, hire good talent. And the beauty of it is that good talent can be local, or if you know someone, uh, you know, who you want to bring in, it's really quite easy to do that. So mm -hmm. Uh, and, and you know, further further than up to that point, I mean, I've I've been making the joke now for years that Estonia really is Silicon Valley's best kept secret unicorn hatchery. Um, but the truth is, it's not so secret anymore because you've got the likes of Andreessen, Union Square, other really big U.S. players who are already investing into this pool of talent and, and pool of companies. Um, but there's still really good value to be had here if you're an investor looking for pipeline. Yep. So it's no, really, I mean, it's it's really a nice sweet spot. Mm -hmm. I think it's, it's more than, it's not just the valuation as, as I think Alvar and, and you, James, also mentioned that it, it's the, the value that you get out of, of, of the money that you are attracting. It's uh, the cost of living is still uh, considerably lower in, mm -hmm. in Estonia that is in the US uh, for the employment cost, uh, definitely. And yeah. in general, the life quality, although yes, uh, uh, in, in, in California, there's a lot more sun. <laughs> But there's a lot of uh, beauty and, and um, let's say the, the safety and the security and, and just the, yeah, the, 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 the quality yeah. of life is very good in, in, in our region. I mean, I think generally it's, it's good to, for, for people who aren't very aware of Estonia to, to you know, it, 
you you shouldn't compare it to um, what it was 30 years ago, you know, which is uh, openly a, a, a post-Soviet country, um, uh, but rather it's a way of getting a Scandinavian or Nordic business culture um, wow. at a discount. And yes. and given the contacts, and I mean, there's there's a, I, something like 20 ferries that go between Tallinn and, and Helsinki on a daily basis. And, you know, half a dozen that go over to Stockholm on a daily basis. That's a longer, longer trip, but there's very, and then a bunch of plane rides too, of course. Um, but there's a, there's a, the, the communities are very closely tied and there's a bunch of expat Estonians in both, in both capitals that are involved in startups in those places. So it's a, um, you know, uh, what's happened quite a bit, and we see this with London, you know, we had uh, TransferWise and, and, and other startups that have their main office, their, their, their technical headquarters are, are in London, but the bulk of their workers are in Tallinn because they know they can get good things done. And that sort of, you know, there's the, the business community is as a modern, I mean, given that everything's online, as as modern as it can possibly get, and so. So, but let, let's let's talk about that a little bit more, um, because right, it's not just the the community; it's also the the entire business and corporate environment. You know, from setting up a company to taxation to interacting with the government. So, let you know, I think everybody would be really curious to hear how simple it is here <laughs> versus many yeah. other competing <laughs> jurisdictions. Well, yeah, I think the coming like. Coming from from Estonia and been living there um, like so long, it's uh, you you start to take things for granted and not understanding what it actually means. Yeah, to have this uh, e-governance and and e-business environment. So, what are the actual uh, implications to your life? Um, it is said that yeah, something like uh, ninety eight percent of government services are on online. Ninety nine percent of all bank transactions are done online. Um, so. What it means for everyday life and, and having the company and, and managing the company is basically means that you don't have to, that, that, that basically, that there is no reason to, to go physically to any government office. Um, everything you can uh, submit your applications and, and get the, uh, the certificates, get anything that you need uh, online. And that uh, is due to the fact that Estonia um, implemented a long time ago by now, um, the um, digital ID card, which is basically your digital identity in online world. So um, almost all Estonians have it. Um, now, thanks to the e-residency program, um, this is open to all the foreigners as well to obtain this identity and then hence being able to, to interact and, and manage your business completely remotely. And, and maybe just it might be worth explaining a little bit more what the e-residency kind of gives you or what that card allows it represents is the Estonian government. You, you have proven your identity to the Estonian government mm -hmm. and the Estonian government then issues you this card that says anything you sign digitally through this card, through this process is as good as a handwritten signature. So anywhere in the European Union, and there's a few other places in the world now where you can use them. That is as good as being there. So think about that from the perspective of, okay, I need to, you know, sign a contract uh, in France. Well, with an e-residency card, you can actually do that from, you know, Chicago or, you know, Buenos Aires. Exactly. And, and I, what, what, you know, what, from the, from the time that, that the e-residency program began and just so everybody understands the e-residency uh, program basically is piggybacking on top of the existing digital infrastructure that's been for, for years like Mara said um, and that they opened it um, I believe six years now this program um, yeah. and it's been it's been amazing I mean it's allowed um, investors to make direct investments into startups um, with, you know without having to come here because they apply for an e-residency card they can make their um, their investment. But what I think is also particularly um, exciting, even now, six years later with this program, is that it allows Estonia to act almost like a Delaware of Europe. Um, because for people looking to operate and transact within the European Union, there really isn't a better option in terms of accessibility, cost, affordability, um, low um, time commitment in terms of maintaining your company. 
Um, it's yeah, there's a lot of really cool benefits to go along with it. Well, and, and to that end, I mean, um, you know, we've heard a lot about Brexit, of course, and and we've had a, a lot of companies that, uh, you know, we're based in London because London was the financial capital of, of Europe, for sure. And uh, with Brexit, that has not only was feared about, but has come to pass that it is, it, it has no longer has that role. It may still be the largest place for it, but, um, you know, companies have moved to Dublin, Frankfurt, Paris, and a, n a number of them to Thailand. Uh, and, you know, it's, it's probably never gonna be a place to have a huge, you know, 10,000 person uh, financial services company, but talk about a great place to, to have, uh, you know, from a, from a legal perspective, you know, having uh, the, the taxation is very efficient in, in Estonia. If you have, a, uh, you have a company there with, whatever number of employees and has uh, X amount of income on, a, on an annual basis, as long as you leave that income, net income in the company, in the Estonian entity, you pay zero taxes on a corporate level for it. Um, and if you then decide you want to extract that capital in the form of a dividend, it's 20%, sometimes less, there's, there's some certain things you can do to, to lessen it, but 20% is what you will pay on a maximum basis for, um, uh, for, uh, uh, for your taxes. So it's, um, it, that's not to say there are no taxes because there's a good safety net, social safety net, and it's, but it, it's all at the individual employee level. And, uh, and what, what's worth noting there is that the, um, well, my camera goes out of focus. Um, the, the taxes on dividends that are taken out of the company are the, the burden is borne by the company, not the individual which is also very interesting. So it's a, um, let's say like this, uh, Estonia doesn't penalize you for making money, which is a lovely business environment to operate in because there are some jurisdictions that um, sometimes it feels like you are being penalized, but Estonia is not one of them. And it's, yeah. it, um, I think the whole philosophy behind um, the, the ease of doing business here, the ease of setting up a company, which I'd love you guys to, to talk about also, um, all of it is kind of done with this philosophy of let's encourage economic growth. And that's behind everything here. So when you come to the Estonian business environment, you're going to find that everything is pushing you towards optimizing for outcomes and uh, generating positive economic benefits. Because if it benefits you, it benefits the country. Because as you said, there are still taxes, even if the corporate taxation rate um, is zero, technically. <laughs> yep. But at the same time, yeah, I think Estonia has also been uh, like nominated many years in a row as as the as, as the country with with the best uh, tax system in place. Yes. Um, mm -hmm. Which uh, yes, it it doesn't mean that we don't pay tax. We do it. It's a very it, it's automated process. Uh, um, um, our tax authority uh, tries to act more as the advisor, and and not the punisher all the time. And uh, yeah, so PT taxes, declarations, uh, everything is, is done online. Um, yeah, what, what's the average time right now? Uh, well, 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 the personal income uh, tax, uh, it could be uh, five minutes. Logging wow. in and, and just uh, clicking, yes, everything is uh, pre-filled. You just double check it. Um, it is, uh, I remember clearly last year, it, it, it frustrated me that when I logged in and I saw like, what do you mean you haven't uh, uh, subtracted the information from my bank automatically that I have paid uh, like a mortgage and, and the interest there. So I had to log in the bank and, and do another extra click that took me like <laughs> two extra minutes. Uh, but yeah, the, the, like the, the attitude or like the, the feeling was like, you know, come on. Yeah, but it's a completely legitimate thing to be annoyed about because there's actually an ask once law on the books here. So yeah. the fact that they didn't pull your information automatically <laughs> means that they weren't complying. <laughs> True. And, yeah. and, and that also goes for the, for the corporate interactions with the tax declarations and then the payments that you do, like a lot of information is automatic. Um, it is done online. Um, it is uh, fairly easy. Um, the whole legal system in Estonia has been built on the notion that it should be uh, as easy as possible, as transparent as possible, as automatic as, as, as possible. 
Um, so yeah, it's, um, I think that the employment taxes, I think that this is one of the things that maybe to mention it, it is different from US. Um, the total employment taxes uh, uh, for a salary fund, it's approximately 50%, but it's, it's worth mentioning here that there are no hidden costs on top of that. Estonia has uh, as a universal healthcare and education uh, for all the residents and that is for free. So there is no extra tax in, in the air. Uh, you can visit doctors, you pay maybe a very small amount of uh, registration fee, uh, five euros per visit. Um, so again, the value that the employee can um, get out of it, it, it's fairly easy and all the costs are, mm -hmm. all, all the taxes are paid by the company. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Um, so, um, so like like uh, like the rest of the Nordics, mm -hmm. the, t the the taxes when they when they are levied can be high in certain situations. However, it is absolutely clear the value that you get back from this, and on on the whole, you'll often make out better than in other markets like in the U.S., where maybe the the individual employee taxation is not so high, but all of the additional perks that go into keeping an employee. In Estonia, it's 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 worked into the the social fabric, and it's mm -hmm. wonderful as an employer. Yep. And it's it's uh, I think that because Estonia is such a small country, and then really the interactions like it's almost like everybody knows everybody, or at least you are in in like one connection away. Um, there is a very strong uh, interaction with uh, with the private sector and and the public sector, with the startup sector as well, on a regular basis, they meet with the with the top government the politicians and officials to to discuss the challenges and and if possible, and it is uh, a lot faster than in in bigger countries to to adopt new changes to the law as well. Um, just over. Like a good example for that also would be the uh, startup visa program that Estonia also has to, to uh, help or, or enable uh, startup companies to, to bring in uh, foreign um, employees and foreign in this case means uh, people outside of uh, European Union. So I remember it was in 2015 when I was working with Startup Wise Guys and we, we started uh, you know, discussing with the Startup Estonia, who is umbrella organization for all the startup ecosystem uh, players, that something needs to be changed, that it's not possible to, you know, uh, for, for the founders to get the salaries from the companies if the founders themselves are out of uh, EU, like Ukrainians or Belarusians. And it took a bit over a year when uh, the government came up with a startup visa program scheme. Um, and now it's been running, I think, starting from 2018, beginning or 17. So a couple of years and it's proven like a really uh, good tool, uh, both for uh, foreign um, founders and employees in Estonia and, and yeah, Estonian companies being able to, to a lot more easily hire uh, very good people to the company. Mm -hmm. And that, that same sort of flexibility extends also um, to the government's interaction with with existing private entities. So I mean, take a look at you know something like uh, Starship, right, which are making these um, igloo coolers on wheels that that deliver you autonomously your groceries and other packages for the last mile delivery. To make those street legal, also had to go through a process, yeah. and the Estonian government was so agile around accommodating these sorts of innovations that even, you know, from, from the kind of grassroots community level all the way up to senior members of government, the, the whole ecosystem is designed to facilitate innovation. So, you know, for anybody looking at this market, you know, not just around the, the benefits of the, the tax system, um, the, you know, the access to, to great founders, just think about it in terms of being in a environment that is constructed literally from the ground up to help you be successful. Yeah, I mean, a, a lot of that has to do with, you know, the, the fact that uh, Estonia had a, essentially had to start from scratch in 1991. And, you know, there's a, there's a story that, you know, we were offered Helsinki's phone system and we said, no, thank you, because we immediately saw that mobile was going to be the future. And so we went there. Um, we were the first country and possibly the only country at this point whose entire 
government offering of services is built around essentially a blockchain. You know, it was called something else at the time, but it's essentially is a blockchain, a distributed ledger, where you know your information on a personal level, but also at each uh, ministry level, is kept on a secure service. And um, you know, what, once you're part of the health system, for example, you know, you you. The idea of a paper prescription from your doctor is, again, mind-boggling. Gosh, that word is hard. Mind-bogglingly mind -boggling. yes. <laughs> um, difficult to to imagine uh, for for people there. And so, you know, it, it is truly a place where you don't waste time on anything you don't want to waste time with. There's plenty of people. People love to play video games. People love to sit around and read books. Not that any of those things are, are a waste of time in any way, shape, or form, but it's a decision to do that. You're not, like I have done in my lifetime here in the U.S., standing in line at the DMV waiting to get the title to your car transferred over and, you know, and, and the weeks putting together tax information and statements and everything else. It's a very different place. And it starts from the government and it goes down to the single founder startup mm -hmm. um, and, and everything in between. And it's a, it's a, it's a beautiful thing to, to, to see. Um, you know, finding interesting investments there is <clears throat> still probably best done in person. Um, obviously, that's a lot harder to do, and they've, you know, we've we've been able to make do over the, over the past year. But um, you know, I think I would draw attention of of both folks interested in 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 coming to Estonia from a, an investment perspective, but also from a startup founding perspective to look at some of the big conferences. And I know Maris has been deeply involved with one of them, probably the premier one, and maybe it'd be worth. You, you, you know more about it than I do, so. <laughs> yeah, that's the conference is called Latitude 59. Uh, it has uh, taken place, I, gosh, I think it's, it's the 14 um, time, uh, like this year. Uh, the end of May is the time, and it is the beautiful time to visit Estonia because the, the long and dark uh, winter is over. The spring uh, is really in a full speed with, uh, with the sun is out and it's warm outside. But yeah, this conference, it is uh, one of the biggest and most international in, in, in our region, uh, except of course, uh, Slush that we are not comparing uh, from Finland. Uh, but yeah, it's, I think uh, the last couple of years we've had more than uh, uh, investors coming uh, or participating from more than 50 countries around the, the world. And, and it really brings together the whole community, not only in Estonia, but also Latvians, Lithuanians uh, visiting and participating and the startups even, even uh, beyond that. Yeah, I, I remember I spoke to a Czech startup founder group uh, uh, and, and, and one from France, I think, and or at least with a French, I think it was a French founder to, to an Estonian company, um, but he'd never, he, he hadn't come to Estonia in, you know, nine months or something. And so he was able to do that. And, um, and then there's, but there's the other conference that um, yes. uh, James has, has been very involved yeah. with. I so um, love Latitude 59, but my, my, my personal favorite is Startup Day. For those who are a little bit more adventurous um, and uh, want to travel two hours to the south of uh, Tallinn, which is the capital of Estonia, um, Latitude happens in the spring, Startup Day happens in the winter. And there's something magical about uh, the city of Tartu in January. Um, and it brings out all the startups from the country. And the reason why I like it, uh, why it's my personal favorite, let's say, um, is because it brings out even the, the earliest, earliest, youngest stage startup and founders. So you see really, really um, teams that are very well advanced and mature, even scale ups, not even startups anymore, um, all the way down to the founder who, you know, is looking forward to participating in his first hackathon. And just being able to see that that range and diversity in one grand hall, um, for me, I, I like it, but I'm partial because I've, I've been mentoring for many years. So I, I'm particularly partial to the early stage teams. Yeah, no, for sure. I mean, one of the things that, um, 
I, you know, and I've yet to make it there. Uh, it's the, the two things on my bucket list as far as sort of um, winter Estonian uh, things are are that and uh, the sauna marathon in uh, in Otepa. I've, yeah. I've not made it to either of those. I've not um, either, but it's also it's on the bucket list. <laughs> yeah, no, for sure. Well, so one thing that you know I find really interesting about the Estonian startup scene is how it's moved from a mostly software uh, technology oriented one to a, a, frankly, a, a wider one. I mean, you now see hardware, you now see, a, and quite a bit of it. Um, you see med tech, you see um, uh, agri-tech, you know, I mean, there's there's some, there's stuff out there. And, and one of, you know, there was a couple of years ago, Monsanto now, Dow, I think, um, bought an Estonian uh, startup, and you know, one of the things I I'm I love seeing is is that transformation. And as each one of these new kind of areas builds out, they, uh, you know, that that same sort of enthusiasm comes in on that, and and so then it you know you find more and more and more of them. So anyway, I thought that that was something that as as we were talking about the conferences, you know, I've noticed the change, the shift to those. Interesting that you mentioned Vitalfields. That was actually my first uh, exit uh, as an investor because Vitalfields was part of Startup Wise Guys portfolio. Uh, the Startup Wise Guys is one of the, the biggest accelerator program and early stage investor in uh, Central Eastern Europe. Uh, and yeah, and the founder um, now is doing a startup called Paktum, which is very active in, in US as well and, and having a US uh, uh, headquarters, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, yes, their their head of sales is based there, um, and I believe he's actively growing the team. So they are yeah. they're doing great stuff. Um, for those who don't know Pactum, uh, Pactum um, does uh, automated contract negotiations for large enterprises, the likes of Walmart. Um, Walmart's the big one. They've definitely done a, uh, and they're in talks with a number of others. Um, you know, this it may sound obvious to renegotiate a contract to make it uh, cheaper for both sides or more more profitable for both sides of the negotiation. And that makes sense when you're dealing with like a 50 or $5 million contract. But when you're dealing with like a $50,000 contract, it maybe doesn't make sense to get involved. Except if you use AI. If you use AI, it's it takes the, you know, thousand of those contracts that are that that a Walmart or 10,000 or 100,000 of these contracts that a Walmart or another large corporation has and negotiates it so that it, it's essentially optimizing those those contracts so that both the supplier and the the buyer uh, get the best possible transaction mm -hmm. and, and so, is a great example also of sorry to jump in of, of yeah. the ecosystem because they're not the only ones working with Walmart. I think I think I know the company that's on the tip of your tongue, Mark. Yeah, yeah, Cleveron, isn't it? Yep. Yes. Exactly. Yeah, and and it's a hardware um, hardware uh, company that is uh, uh, producing how how it's uh, described a uh, pickup uh, stations for your no, online uh, delivery. Um, pickup points, um, and they're they're considered robots because they, they look like large boxes, but inside you've actually got multiple robotic components shuffling things around to make your life easier. But what I wanted to say previously as well, it's a fun fact that um, Estonia has legalized the artificial intelligence in, in the law, having the, the chatbots in a legal status, even the government is using its own uh, that is called CRAT. Uh, just throwing it in. <laughs> and the fun thing is, uh, you know, when, it, when Estonia names its various things, it often takes um, heritage or children's uh, names and puts them in there, and and Gret is a is 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 a similar sort of thing, and and so it's um, and that's I, I think also one of the things I find really interesting about about Estonia is the the look towards the new, but with feet solidly planted in in its history. We we don't forget who have helped us, who who been there for us um, and and you know those sorts of friendships last you know uh, onwards I mean we were talking earlier about about Skype we still see the Skype founders who are not Estonian uh -huh. involved in the Estonian ecosystem and 
in turn, the Estonian, uh, there's a lot of Estonians who have gone on to the Swedish and Danish uh, wow. ecosystems and been involved there. So it's a, that sort of old and new and friends is a, is a, is a deep part of, of, of the startup scene to me anyway. And with that, I think um, we'll need to wrap up. So I just want to kind of say that, you know, Estonia, we built Skype. Um, we brought you the likes of Pipedrive, TransferWise. Um, we're legalizing AI. I think it's fair to say that Estonia is probably the most important country that most people have never heard of. Um, but I'd love to hear from you guys. What are the, you know, very quickly before we, we close the session out, what are the top three things that describe the Estonian ecosystem to you? What top, top three words that describe the, the ecosystem um, that you'd like to share with the audience? I think uh, to me, innovation is a very big one. The, the iteration and innovation, you, you get these uh, hackathons where, where people come up with phenomenal ideas in, in 72 hours. And yes, it happens elsewhere, but it happens there in, on such a scale that I, I just boggles my mind. <laughs> Yeah, the, uh, the, the Global Hack Initiative that uh, came from Estonia as well, that uh, went around the globe uh, um, last year. A uh, word that comes to my mind is efficiency. It's uh, less words and a more actions mentality that, you know, we don't talk that much. We prefer executing. And that Estonian ecosystem or the mindset is, is really uh, driving towards. For, for me, it is... Uh high transparency, low bureaucracy, and community. I think those really, for me anyway, my experience with the Estonian ecosystem, that's, those have been the three kind of key pillars. Yeah. But on behalf of, of myself and Maris and, and Alvar, um, we'd like to thank the ITC for hosting the Startup Summit and inviting us to, to share about Estonia. And if any of you have any questions about the, the market setting up here, um, even looking for partners here and sourcing services from Estonia, reach out to us. Um, all our information is up on the website and we look forward to speaking with you. It was a pleasure. Thank you, James. Thank you, Alvar, for this uh, conversation and, and really looking forward to, to connect with the attendees of this uh, great event. Thank you, Maris. Thank you, James. Thank you, ITC. And uh, likewise, looking forward to helping anyone who uh, is interested in our story and, um, and can benefit from this. Yes. Thank Bye. you both. And thank you, everyone. Bye. Bye.